So Sandy Baird with Eric Onyero talking about what's going on and the current news is not very happy news, but we're here to help discuss it and maybe elucidate some of it. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, Israel is engaging a uh, war against Hezbollah by attacking Hezbollah in Lebanon. It's been uh, going on for a few days and it's uh, uh, it looks like we're going towards a regionalization of the conflict. Correct. But what happened in, uh, in uh, Lebanon is not like out of the blue. The conflict between Israel and Lebanon stretches very far, like since maybe 1948, and uh, has been, uh, have seen many conflicts and wars. So uh, before we go further, Sandy, I would like us to watch this video, which gives, you know, the history of uh, Israel versus Lebanon. Israel's northern border with Lebanon has seen many conflicts. Let's look back at the history between the two countries and how Hezbollah came about. In 1948, Lebanon and other Arab countries fought against the emerging state of Israel. By the end of the war in 1949, Israel held about 40% of the area initially earmarked for the Palestinians by the UN Partition Plan of 1947. Around 100,000 Palestinians who fled or were expelled from their homes in what had been British-ruled Palestine arrived in Lebanon as refugees. In 1970, Jordan fought a brief but bloody war with Palestinian groups operating under the Palestinian Liberation Organization's umbrella that were launching cross-border attacks on Israel from Jordanian territory, provoking heavy Israeli responses. These groups were defeated and expelled from Jordan in what became known as the Black September Civil Conflict. PLO forces regrouped in Lebanon and made Beirut their new headquarters, leading to more cross-border flare-ups. In the 1970s, Palestinian guerrilla raids into Israel and Israeli military retaliation on targets in Lebanon intensified. This led many Lebanese to flee their country south, aggravating sectarian tensions in Lebanon, igniting the civil war in 1975 that killed an estimated 150,000 people. The causes of the war were multifaceted and deeply rooted but can be generalized as a growing insecurity crisis. In 1975, part of the Christian militia group, the Phalangists, attacked a bus taking Palestinians to a refugee camp at Tal Zatar in Lebanon. The attack escalated what started an intermittent cycle of violence into a recurring conflict between the Phalangists and the Lebanese national movement, whose coalition of Lebanese leftists and Muslims supported the PLO's cause. In 1978, Israel invaded South Lebanon and set up an occupation zone in an operation against Palestinian guerrillas after a militant attack near Tel Aviv. 1982 is an important year. Israel invaded Lebanon all the way to Beirut in an offensive that followed more border fire. In that same year, hundreds of civilians in the Palestinian refugee camps of Sabra and Shatila were massacred by phalangist militiamen, allowed in by Israeli troops after Lebanon's newly elected Maronite Catholic president was killed by a bomb. An Israeli inquest later found that the attack was led by then Defense Minister of the Israeli Forces, Ariel Sharon, who would go on to become prime minister to be personally responsible for allowing the massacre to happen. And in that year, Hezbollah was established in Lebanon by Iran's Revolutionary Guards to counter the Israeli invasion. Between 1982 and 1986, a number of attacks against foreign militaries were executed and Hezbollah waged guerrilla war against Israeli forces. In 1983, Israel pulled back from Beirut, but retained forces in the south towards the Litani River. In 1992, when the civil war in Lebanon ended, Hezbollah entered parliamentary politics, winning eight seats in Lebanon's 128-seat assembly. Fighting began again in 1993 in what is known as the Seven-Day War, 
after a series of attacks by both Israel and Hezbollah fighters near the border that killed civilians and soldiers on both sides. Hezbollah continued attacking Israeli forces in the south and firing rockets into northern Israel in 1996. And Israel launched a 17-day offensive that killed more than 200 people in Lebanon. In 2000, Israel withdrew from South Lebanon territory in accordance with the UN Security Council's resolution, ending 22 years of occupation. In July 2006, Hezbollah crossed the border into Israel, kidnapped two Israeli soldiers and killed others. It demanded the release of Palestinian detainees in return for the hostage soldiers. Israel refused and launched a five-week war involving heavy Israeli airstrikes. Both Israel and Hezbollah declared victory after a UN Security Council resolution. This resolution, called 1701, was intended to resolve the war, calling for a full end to hostilities between Israel and Hezbollah the withdrawal of Israeli forces from Lebanon and Hezbollah's forces to withdraw north of the Litani River and the disarmament of armed groups including Hezbollah, something that remains elusive to this day. Since 2006, there have been regular tit-for-tat attacks across Lebanon's southern border. Things began to escalate after the 7th of October attack by Hamas on Israel. Hezbollah launched a rocket campaign to Israel in support of Palestinians under Israeli bombardment in the Gaza Strip, in which Israel responded with more fire. On the 17th of September in 2024, thousands of handheld pages belonging to Hezbollah operatives in Lebanon exploded, which then left them on high alert. Ten days later, Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's leader, was killed in an Israeli strike. Since then, Israel has continued bombing Hezbollah targets even after the death of Hassan Nasrallah, leaving more than one million people displaced in Lebanon, a population of 5.8 million. This is a brief history of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the engagement between the Israeli and Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now, the real problem is, is it going to be a regional war? It is a regional war. Like, I don't understand why there's even a discussion about it. It involves not only Lebanon, it involves Syria. Israel and the United States attack Syria almost on a daily basis and have for years. Okay, it involves Syria, it involves the Houthis in Yemen, it involves Lebanon, um, and it involves, of course, Israel. I'm not certain why anybody even says or questions, of course it's a regional war, of course. Uh, uh, a lot of observers are saying that, in fact, we're seeing a war between Israel and Iran. Yes. That, you know, Hezbollah and, and the rest are proxies of Iran in this war. This is what I believe. Mm. This is a war between the U.S. Mm. and Iran and Israel. The United States has been interested in destabilizing and controlling Lebanon for years, began in 1954. Um, and I believe probably it has to do with the fact that Iran is a huge oil producer, the biggest, the second biggest, I believe, in the world. The United States and Britain have been after Iran since at least the First World War when it was discovered that oil was important. So this is not only a war between Israel and Iran, it's a proxy war between Israel, between the U.S. and Iran. And in some ways, Israel, being the weaker power, is carrying out that war right now. But Israel would love to include the United States in that war, and the administration goes along with that every single day. If the United States gets truly involved in a war against Iran, the whole world is going to suffer about that. And every day you hear on the mass media in this country that the United States is thinking about attacking Iran. But what is uh, Iran, uh, uh, what does Iran have against Israel? Iran what has is against, I don't believe Iran does have anything against Israel, particularly. Iran wants to defend itself in a region which is very nasty about Iran. But, uh... Remember that Iran, that Israel is a nuclear power. Mm. They were given nuclear, seek whatever, nuclear technology by the United States. That's what we're risking here. Israel does 
appear to be wanting to have at least regime change in Iran. That's very dangerous, especially if they do regime change in Iran with U.S. weapons. A lot of people in Lebanon also are not happy with, you know, what Hezbollah has been doing. Of course. Hezbollah is uh, both a political party, but also, you know, a, a faction, I mean... A, a, it's a, a quasi-governmental body also. It provides services to people who have been in need of services. Yes, it is what the United States calls a terrorist group. But the people of... Um, Lebanon have very different views about it. Some of them hate Hezbollah. Some of them welcome, in fact, probably U.S. strikes on, on Hezbollah. They certainly don't welcome U.S. strikes on Beirut, but they do probably, they don't like Hezbollah, but there's a lot of other people who do support Hezbollah in yeah. Lebanon. Of course, the, the people that are supporting Hezbollah, but right. you know, the country is in the country has been for a long time essentially a fail, a lot a failed state, a lot. As all these countries are, as our own could be considered as well in a lot of ways. Not yet, but if these wars continue, we could be facing the same kind of chaos. In fact, I think we are as these countries that we call failed states. Lebanon has been a weak, poverty-stricken country for a very long what time. What are the reasons for that? Well, I, I'm not certain about what the economic reasons are, except that it has, like all countries that are basically former colonial powers, they are very, usually very destabilized, very no, weak. Beirut and also they be. have much, in Lebanon, as I understand Beirut it, the government, be, yeah. the government itself is torn between Christians and Muslims. And the, uh, the government was controlled by the French for eons. Um, it was part of Syria. Mm. Lebanon, like many countries in the Middle East and throughout what I would call the developing world, is still struggling with its colonial past. I have great sympathies with Lebanon. However, they do have elections. They are kind of, they call themselves a republic, but they have really a lot of difficulties. But how always can have. you have elections and have like a, a, a group, Hezbollah, that is waging military, I mean, uh, campaign against Israel? Israel, his, Hezbollah is a political faction, just like I would call, for instance, any minority party, it's a political faction. However, Hezbollah is very powerful in the southern part of because Lebanon. Because of Iran. That's, in my mind, in my mind, it's, that's very much in dispute. I don't know that for a fact. I think that's what the U.S. says. Mm. The U.S. says that, and I'll say what the United States says which I don't always believe any more than anybody else should believe it. The United States says that Hezbollah is an ally of Iran or is supported by Iran or is armed by Iran. Mm. Hezbollah also is an indigenous group within southern Lebanon that's supported by a lot of Lebanese people. I agree with that, but you know, you have to, I mean, uh, uh, it's clear that many operatives of Hezbollah have been, you know, uh, killed in Iran. Mm -hmm. What were they doing over there if they're not allied? I, what are, I mean, we could say that about, for instance, Germany. We could say it about all our allies. They're here in the United States. Do they deserve to be killed? I mean, Lebanese people are here in our country. Mm. What not is that? Is that why why does, no, no, of course not, we, but many we, Lebanese we people. We tend to forget. I mean, Sandy, I agree with you. We have but Lebanese we tend people to in our that, town. You know, Hezbollah is launching rockets. I don't tend to forget Israel. anything. I don't forget Why, anything. Why, for example, is Hezbollah launching rockets? Okay, to, to answer that question, we have to go back to why the whole region seems to be, um, a, the whole region is essentially, with exceptions of individuals, is really very defensive around Israel and very much, I would guess, in the state of war with Israel. Why? This goes back, as you Which know. Those countries. We we need to. Okay, I I'm going to go back to 1948. Yeah. With probably with the reason with the Holocaust behind them, a very tragic event that happened though in Europe, not in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. The state of Israel was founded by the UN. The United and the UN, as you've said over and over, are essentially the UN is controlled 
by the white allies that won World War II. Mm. That's the Security Council. In 1948, the state of Israel was created by the UN. The Arabs were not asked whether they wanted that a, a Jewish state in the Middle East, in their land. However, there was reasons to allow at least a homeland for the security of Jews. I support that, a safe homeland for Jews. And so it, the state of Israel was created. And there was massive emigration from Europeans with reason to seek sanctuary, in a sense, and safety in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. But that was done without the permission of the Arabs who lived there. They didn't do the Holocaust. So essentially what happened was with this mass emigration, many of the Palestinians who lived in the region were displaced. And they fled, as this video says, to southern Lebanon, a lot of them. And that's where they were. But they have never accepted the displacement from their homes. And essentially all around Israel, is within a lot of but Arab countries, excuse me, yeah. who are mm -hmm. essentially, they're pro-Palestinian. But let's go back to that war. Yeah. It was fought. Israel, Which one? I mean, 48. Mm -hmm. As a result of the war, everybody accepted the result or it was no. still... No, no. I, mean, uh, I mean, on the international law, you know, uh, like, it, was it as the result? What, what results are you talking about? That Israel? No, it wasn't accepted by, it was, first of all, Israel was founded in 48, the war ended in 45. Five. No, not 45. Yes, it did. Yes, it no, did. No, the, 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 the world war. The world war ended but in 1945. Yes, right. I agree. And Israel was created by the United Nations in 1948. And then massive emigration began from Europe to that region in the Middle East that was called Palestine. That was Palestine. It wasn't Israel. It was Palestine. And so with that massive emigration that came in, what happened was what the Palestinian people call the Nakba. Israel, Israeli settlers displaced those Palestinians who had to flee their homes and their lands. And they dispersed all over the place and they went to Lebanon. They never though gave up the idea that that was their homes that they wanted to return to, never. They haven't to this day. They haven't accepted it, no. And so that is the basis of what we're talking about. Whether it was right or wrong is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what happened in 1948. But the state of Israel as a Jewish state has never been accepted by the Palestinian people or many of the Arabs around them. No. And that's the basis of this whole argument. And this is, that's the basis of these wars. So, uh, and it's not, they're not going to be solved until the question of the Palestinian people is solved in some way. But it seems an impossible It's task. not impossible. How would you, could you... Uh, how would I yeah. solve it? I would say, uh, this is also, it's not how I would solve it. I'm going to just say what the facts of the situation are right now in Israel. Israel right now is a de facto state. It is a de facto state by its military actions in 1967 when Israel conquered essentially the entire West Bank. Mm. The entire West Bank full of Palestinians and now Jewish settlers are really under the jurisdiction of one government, which is the Israeli government. Why isn't that now one state? Now I'll tell you why I think everybody says that's not a solution. Maybe not, but it's the facts. Okay. So what I think will be the solution is making that one state fair to both peoples. One state, one person, one vote. That's what's happened, except that those Palestinians don't have a you, vote. You're talking about a state of Israel where yeah. Palestinians will be treated Equal equally. citizens. People don't want to live together. Okay, that's not clear at all. They do live together. No, but <laughs> unfortunately. You, I mean, uh, uh, do we have any, uh, any, uh, is there anywhere in history uh, like the Palestinian 
accepting the f to live under, uh, I mean... I d I'm talking about something different than what you're talking about. I'm talking about what are the facts. De facto, you know what that means. Yeah. De facto, there is one state. That one state is under the Israeli government's jurisdiction. One state. Now you're asking something else. Wait a minute, you're asking something else. They do live together. Separate, separate, but not equal. They have a state the way that South Africa was a state. One state with, with two peoples, one of whom have no rights. Why don't then the struggle become, let's give the Palestinians rights within Israel? Why can't they be equal? One man, one person, one vote. That's the solution. Mm. But you said yourself that the Palestinians don't accept. They can't this. accept it right yeah, now. They can't accept and it. guess so, why? Well, guess why? Why? You tell me why they can't accept it. No, it's normal, but you can't. No, no, no. Get why? Me. Tell you me take, why. You take away my possessions, you take away my okay. land. Okay. All right. But so, they, what then has to happen now? Since it is one state, the Palestinians have got to be given one man, one person, one vote. It has to cease being a segregated state, just like we had to do. How about the, the two-state solution? There is none because, and I'll tell you why. Because since also, since 1948, then 67, many Israeli Jews have settled on the West Bank, mm. and, they, and they have only Jewish settlements, only Jewish roads. They're already there. They're not going to leave. Maybe they. Maybe you could argue that they shouldn't leave. That now is their homes. But why do they have to have Jewish-only settlements? Why can't we break down the apartheid system it, within Israel? They're never going to... Those settlers on the West Bank are not going to return to one state, one Jewish only state. They're not going to do it. It seems that it's, an, it's impossible. It's not impossible if you begin to talk reality. It's not impossible. I mean, it's been like on for like almost half a century. And, and guess what? It has bred yeah. war after war after war because the Palestinians have to have their human rights recognized. They have to, or it's going to be war after war after war, as we're seeing right now. It's got to be solved. It is the key question of all these Middle Eastern wars. It's the key. And the United States, by continuing to give arms to only one side of the conflict, the Israelis, are fueling those wars. That's my beef. You know, Israeli government, probably to the, Isra to the Palestinians, horrible government. That's their business. My business is addressing my government in this country, and I am demanding, as any American citizen should, no more arms to Israel. And that's really what is happening also in this election. A lot of people... people leave Iran? Like I a, didn't a say do, a thing do, about do, Iran. Do, okay, how can we put pressure also on Iran to be, you know, because, at the, I mean, uh, what is Iran's business anyway? Uh, I'm going to ask in, you a in, different in, question. In, in, what is the business of the United States in the Middle East? Because they're allies, right? I don't know. That. Are they? I don't even know if Israel they're military. Israel is an ally of, okay. uh, of uh, the U.S. No, they're more than that. They're almost like one of our states at this point. But, However, but, I'm going to give you the George Washington argument. Mm -hmm. No permanent alliances. The United States should have no permanent alliances, particularly when its allies are committing such human rights violations. We should not, therefore, be supporting a government which is making war all over the Middle East. And we shouldn't be supporting them with guns, in particular. E can Iran play a role here, like, uh, towards peace? Because okay. Iran's vows to also, you know, uh, uh, destroy Israel. Iran's not my business. Iran, but to Iran me, is, is not my... Iran problem. is not my problem, or yours. Our own government is the problem to me. Yeah, but the, the U.S. Okay. is not the only actor. All right, here. Israel attacks Iran. Mm. That is very, very upsetting to me. Mm. Iran is bound to retaliate. That also is really upsetting. Okay, that's, okay, that's going to be a wider regional war. 
But our problem as American citizens is not to support either side with weapons. Stay out of it. It is not in our interest to be continually fueling wars, including massive amount of money to Ukraine. Same deal. It's not in our interest to do this. Our interest is to create a stronger American public and a more prosperous American people. These wars are going to destroy our country, too. But these are wars that have been around. I mean, they. Doesn't was, matter if yeah, they've, been, they've around. been around. We since stay the out of it. Of, stay out of it. I'm going to say the same thing that George Washington said How can and you? Thomas Jefferson. You have, you have oil in the region. You, you, uh, America wants cheap oil. Mm -hmm. So how can they uh, not be involved in this? Trade with oil. Buy it. You don't need to control it all. Buy it. <laughs> or else get it here. There's been, you know, drill here, like the Republicans are saying. Hmm. So right now, Lebanon is being attacked by yes. Israel. But yes. we don't, we, we seem also to forget that, you know, uh, Hezbollah is sending rockets. So is it like... Uh, uh, um, Hezbollah has to stop also uh, so that uh, uh, Israel stop? Is, look at Lebanon as the Palestinians is going to act in self-defense. Israel does too. Not I, the states I'm, of Lebanon. I'm saying no. Hezbollah. Because we, we tend okay. to, and that's, that's, that's a dangerous. No, no, no. Uh, it's not dangerous. To it's call not, Hezbollah okay. Lebanon. Free speech yeah. is not dangerous. It is. What I'm saying, I'm more. saying the following. Mm. I'm saying that the Palestinian people, the Lebanese people, have resisted occupation since 1948. Mm. That's the basis of the problem. Israel has always responded, not only responded, but started wars, began to dispossess people of their property long before this. These wars will not be solved on either side until the Palestinian question is solved. The United States, in my view, should not be sending arms to Israel. It's not in our interests as citizens of the world to be continuing to foster wars all over the world, including in Ukraine. This is against the interests of the United States. And it's difficult because, you know, if Israel doesn't have, you know, the means mm -hmm. to, uh, to defend itself, it's going to be obliterated. Uh-huh. Anyway, the so, business of the United States is to stop wars. The business of the United States is to stop the wars. The business, the best interest of the United States is to stop fueling and giving guns to anybody, really, we should always be acting defensively. This is not interest of our self-defense, neither war. The interests of the United States are not only, you know, look, I mean, it's not only uh, here in, in, in the U.S., it's abroad. It, it, it's, I mean, there are routes for ships. I mean, there are so many uh, things that the U.S. rely on. Uh, for we don't need to. Business. We could be self-reliant. I mean, Sandy, this, is, uh, this, is, this has been like... Uh, 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 people have tried to do that. No, they so haven't. Long. No, they, they haven't. Been, yeah. No, they have not. The United States, from 1898 on, the Spanish-American War, has sought to build an empire overseas. That's a big mistake. And the, it's the empire the that is coming one. down. The I didn't say, not, uh, uh, hey, out there, you, you know. You bet your I life. Mean, I have the feeling that those who are, like, some people here in the U.S. think that out there you have, like, nice folks. I that don't. don't want. Hey, I don't. So don't accuse me of that. I, I don't, don't think that, I don't think there are very many nice know. folks anywhere. So? Especially those who have power. So, I mean, uh, uh, China, Russia, mm -hmm. Iran mm -hmm. are also, mm -hmm. you know, countries that are, you know, seeking to become powerful. Some are already. So, uh, yeah. we cannot say so that what the only... The yeah, only... I can say anything. Don't tell me what I yeah, cannot but say. Cannot, yeah, but we cannot say that, you know, the only, uh, the, the only superpower I didn't. here that is at... I know. didn't. You didn't listen to me, as always. I didn't say uh, we were the only one. I be, said this is my fair. superpower. It, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it could be your superpower, yeah. but we all are, you know, inhabitant of the planet. So? so what, whatever is going on, yeah. you know, so I'm telling least, you what I think is good for the planet. Yeah. What is the United good? States should stop arming all these other countries. 
only the United States or Iran? I, I'm a stop? citizen of this country. Iran should stop also? I am telling you, I'm a citizen of But this the country. The war in which mm -hmm. your country is uh, uh, bound to includes Iran. Okay. Do you want me to say anything really about Iran? The United States has been after the resources of Iran since at least 1953. Mm. At least. Mm. So the United States is not innocent toward Iran. Never has been. The United States threatens to bomb Iran every day if you listen to the news. I hope Iran, they don't. Iran, Iran, Iran vows to do that, so. I just said. Against the U.S. The United States, the Iran has no power against us. The United States has great power. And also, Israel does. You've got to remember Israel is a nuclear power, and so is the United States. What I'm saying is that, as an American, it's not in our interest to engage in these wars. It's not in our interest. It's not in the interest of the citizens of this great country is to be at war late? everywhere. Is it too late to retract? The U.S. is already like... It's uh, never too late. It's, how can it be? How, can, how do you see it, like, even over the time? How can I see it? I do see it. That's why. How, can, how, how, how is it possible? How, how is it possible to, to that I can see it's what's like, happening? It's, it's, like, it's like a little hippie thinking... Because now, I mean, he, now he's accusing me. Listen, since listeners. Since no, no, he's I mean, accusing me of being a hippie. No, no, no way. I'm not accusing you to of being a hippie. Yeah, but you it's just did. It's a little did. bit uh, 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 platonic. It's a little bit no, utopic. Plato was not an idealist. It's, like, it's a little bit utopic. I mean, utopic to think that the U.S. would hey, just. Hey, I am echoing. It's, the, it's the. It's you're it's not the, listening. I am echoing the farewell address of George Washington, our first president, who said. No Is permanent board, alliances. Life changes. Except that the there are others who carry. There yes. are others who carry on his yeah. great message. Me being one of them. Yeah, but the result is, we won't get out of uh, that war in Israel any soon. We won't. No, it's we're not going to win it. We're not going to win it. But nobody could win. Yes, I know. Iran cannot okay, win. Okay, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you as, again. The United States should stop ending arms sales to Israel, you know what, the war would be over. Maybe in a day. Not sure. Okay, you're not sure, I am. Okay, so it's we so should easy, end on it's that. It's so easy to say, okay, if, uh, until uh, the U.S. stops, the war won't, it's, it's, it's too it's easy. easy. Oh, it's really? Too, it's easy. Where does, you know, Hezbollah gets his, uh, it, it's, it's... I don't uh, even know, because they don't certainly have an air force like we do. But if you don't have an air force... Right. Why, why, what is your business to send rockets They, to, uh, in, you know, in, if, if I were in Lebanon, and I'm not, if I were in Palestine, and I'm not, the war against the occupation of Israel, of Palestinian lands, is going to cause a war for a very long time. But that war can only go on if the United States continues to arm Israel, and it will go on until the rights of the Palestinian people are finally recognized. I agree with the recognized. rights of the Palestinian okay. to be recognized, yep. but not necessarily for the U.S. to stop, because oh, okay. Iran also okay, then is an not, enemy okay, of then Israel. You're not, if the Iranians okay. don't right. stop sending arms, if the Iran... Okay, I mean, I, why is... Prove it. <laughs> oh, Sandy, come Okay, on. we should stop. I mean... We, it's, our show is over, I, I think. Mean, Prove With it. all due respect. It's, 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 it's not easy to say, okay, oh, yeah, just I'm prove really it easy. because Iran yeah. doesn't get... Yeah. Anyway, they are different actors and they're all responsible for what is going yeah, on. Yeah, well, see, I don't, even, okay. I don't agree with that, that either. Is, I don't agree with that. No, I don't. Let's, let's, let's no, I don't. I just told you. And, no, no. The I'll tell you the Israel. major cause is the occupation of the Palestinian lands and people by the state of Israel, which began in 1948 and will never end until it's over. Solved? Demo I just uh, said, diplomatically or by military force? It has to be solved by the recognition that Israel is one state with two equal people. So until then, do you think that the war is, uh, will, 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 uh, will solve the problem? I just, It's, no. I mean, millions no. of people are no. dying. No. Just, I mean, no. someone could say no. that Nasrallah maybe is like, it's for his own... Nasrallah doesn't speak for everybody in the region. He's dead, isn't he? He's, he doesn't okay, speak he for wasn't, anybody he wasn't, anymore. He wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't speaking for the Okay, the, but the, he's the dead anyway, so what dead. are you worried about? So, why is 
uh, 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 the U.S. being asked to stop only the U.S.? I mean, I'm saying stop arms sales. Okay, that's it. Okay, the so the U.S. sells arms to other and I, of the and world. what did I say? Russia sells arms. Okay, to, Iran I'm sells arms to conflicts that are you know. But you don't quite understand. My position is yeah. I'm a citizen of the United States. I'm calling on my government to stop arms sales. The Russian people probably can take care of the Russian government. Okay, so let's end on that. All right. Okay. You conclude? No. Well, we'll see you in a month or so.